Hello everybody, this is a follow-up video to the engine noise diagnosis video that I uploaded several weeks back. In that video, I left it open-ended and left you guys to decide on your own based on the evidence I gathered whether the 99 Malibu here with the engine noise had a bottom end noise like rod knock or a top end noise like collapse lifters or valve train noise or something like that. So in this video, what we're gonna do is dig in there and show exactly where the noise is coming from so you'll have the satisfaction of knowing if your diagnosis was correct if you participated and posted what your diagnosis was in the comments in that first video. I will of course put a link to that video in the description below. So let's get started. I left it up to you guys to decide based on the evidence whether it was top end or bottom end engine noise and what you thought and those of you who stuck your neck out for the overwhelming most part were absolutely correct. You guys called a top end engine noise without hesitation and that is indeed the case. And here's how I know that. First of all, the rod knock test that I do with the screwdriver, it passed on all cylinders so it is not rod knock. That's not to say there aren't other sources of bottom end noise. You could have excessive crankshaft play, things like that. But the thing is, when you look at the top end of this engine, um, take a look and you'll see clearly where that noise was coming from. So I'm over here at the valve train for number five. Uh, we've got, uh, let's see what we got here. This is gonna be exhaust and this is intake. And it looks like the intake valve is open a little bit right now, so I'm gonna turn the engine over to get the intake closed. There we go. Because I know if the intake's closed, then both valves are fully closed. And what we can see is with this push rod here and this rocker arm, it's very stiff. But look at this, extremely loose. As a matter of fact, I could almost, if I really tried, I could almost get that rocker arm um, free from the push rod and remove the push rod without loosening the rocker arm. So that obviously a source of noise. As we go down the line and set the other valves to their uh, closed positions, there is actually another one over in the front of the engine right here. And this guy also is actually looser than the other one and all of the other ones seem okay. So we actually have what appears to be uh, two collapses uh, in the lifters um, or some problem with the camshaft. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and remove the lifters and we'll take uh, one of these lifters, which I believe is collapsed, and then we'll take, uh, compare it with a lifter that I know is good and see if we can see any difference. So hopefully that'll be the case and it's not something like a completely worn out camshaft lobe on these or something where I have to do a camshaft swap, which I may have to do anyway if I have to replace the lifters. I'll probably try reconditioning them if that's the case using that lifter reconditioning video that I will also put in the link description. We'll maybe give that a try, see if it works, but let's get some lifters out of here and take a look. Just a general word of advice here. Whenever you remove internal engine components, it's really important that if you reuse them, they go right back to the exact location they came from. So uh, this is a little thing I got from Summit Racing. This tray here is a nice valve train organizer and you can uh, organize anything up to a V8 engine without too much uh, complication. So really cool thing. And I also, here's another little tip. I use this 
for the bottom end for pistons and piston rings. This is actually just a two liter soda tray uh, that you would find at any supermarket or something. You can just ask them for this and they usually will let you have one. So uh, that's perfect for organizing your pistons. So um, very important that whatever method you use, you can put stuff back the way you found it. These models use a lifter retainer. And remember when you take this off, you're gonna to wanna to remember what the orientation of it was and whether it was from the front or back. Always important to do that. You might notice, by the way, if you look, um, I don't know if you can see it with the camera, but there is severe coolant mixed with the oil. If you remember in the last video, we did find that as part of the diagnosis. It is actually from a blown head gasket that was verified by a compression and leak down test uh, right around the number five here. Um, so it does have a blown head gasket. And uh, actually, the owner says that this is the second time in six months that the head gasket was done. So um, probably I'm going to have to take a really thorough look and see if maybe when they replaced the head gasket, they didn't check to make sure that the cylinder head flatness was within spec. That's a very common reason for a quick head gasket failure like that. So definitely some investigation warranted. but. Um, Usually you can just remove these lifters with your fingers. And if not, a really good way to do it is to use a magnet, a strong magnet, and try to work them loose. And if you spray some carburetor cleaner on them while you jiggle them around with the magnet, that'll usually free them up too. So um, sometimes these can really be kind of a pain to remove, but these are coming out pretty easily. So let's see if we can um, get a collapsed one and a good one and see if we can find a difference. All right, and boy, some of you guys really are good. Indeed, this is what I would have expected it to look like. Uh, let's see if we can show you this in the camera. And we can see that uh, this lifter here, the body inside is depressed quite far into the lifter. Whereas if we look at its partner here, you see that it is not nearly as depressed. So this clearly is indeed a collapsed lifter. And you remember there was another collapsed lifter at number three. There you go. You can see that the body is really depressed in as opposed to, again, a known good lifter. This is kind of hard to show in the camera. There we go. You can see that this guy here is, is way collapsed. So uh, I'm going to see if I can do that uh, reconditioning. I doubt it looks like we're going to be doing some uh, new lifters and probably new camshaft with this. That is a collapsed lifter. Um, boy, you guys, that just immediately called collapsed lifter is the problem. Well done. Uh, that's the first for me. So uh, looks like I got a lot of work to do with this. So much to my surprise, after soaking the lifters in gasoline, look at the gunk that I got out of them. Um, but after soaking them in gasoline, I was able to um, take them apart and put them back together uh, as per the lifter reconditioning video I did earlier, which I have a link in the description. And you can see now that the lifter is back to its normal position. Look how nice and clean it is, too. So um, we'll put these back in the car and we'll see how it runs. All right, time for the moment of truth. And also this will ultimately show that this was lifter noise because since I didn't do anything with the bottom end, if there's still noise, then we've got a problem. But I'm gonna go ahead and start it up. And I expect a little bit of noise until the lifters that I reconditioned fill with oil, but then I'll bet it runs quiet. So um, let's see what happens. Wow, what a difference. So I guess that uh, shows it. So if you think about it, I've actually got two videos, one with rod knock and one with obvious lifter noise. So I guess uh, you can look back at those videos and if you've got engine noise, you could kind of see what your engine sounds more like. But I'm pretty happy with this. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful.